Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body what is in the world of biology standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system it's a regenerating system it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis and while some folks may call that healing renewing regenerating system a miracle it really is just the way the body works if you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. If you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you want to contribute to the conversation, our number today, 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. We welcome your calls, 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase Longevity products off the site, or you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the website as well. BrightsideBen.com, CriticalHealthNews.com, and PharmacistBen.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a business, earn all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Of course, you can make as much or as little money as you like. Make your own hours. Work out of your living room. If you're a single parent or if you're a parent and you want just a side job, you don't want a full-time job, this is a perfect business for you. Of course, you can also help spread the word about how powerful and important a good nutritional supplement program can be. Call 866-735-2470. They can give you the full scoop, or you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. Also want to remind you to check out our skin health products at truthtreatments.com. Truth Retinol 5% gel made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, silicon oil, propylene glycol, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want, just retinol, vitamin C in our transdermal delivery matrix. All my truth treatment formulations are made with only active and functional ingredients. You shouldn't have to pay for anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Check them all out at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We're talking about the most ancient of hormones, estrogen, the oldest from an evolutionary perspective, the oldest hormone. It's actually a family of hormones, estrogens, most well recognized as youth and fertility hormones, but they are so much more than youth and fertility hormones, the estrogens. They play a role in connective tissue development, fiber formation, fibrosis, inflammatory issues, immune problems, neurology, and obviously, most obviously, reproduction and the growth of the fetus. They are pro-inflammatory hormones and they are associated with the stress response. This is one of the biggest misunderstandings or non-understandings about the hormone estrogen. It is a stress response hormone, as we've talked about a lot on this program. As most people know, estrogen levels decline at menopause, but we are always making estrogen. Men are making estrogen as well as women, by the way. We're always making estrogen. As long as we have body fat, we will be making estrogen. And we also make estrogen in the intestine. We make it in the liver. We make it in the adrenal glands. In fact, estrogen is made throughout the body. So the big question is, for women, is hormone replacement therapy with estrogen necessary after menopause? 
And of course, this is a decision that everybody's going to have to make for themselves. I'm not going to, I don't like being in the position of telling people what to do ever. I don't like telling people what to do, but especially when it comes to HRT, hormone replacement therapy, such a personal decision. The fact is though, elevated estrogens are associated with a whole slew of health problems. So it's something that you have to consider wisely. It's not a routine thing. It's not like you go into menopause and all of a sudden you got to get, you have to take uh, estrogen replacement therapy. And even if hormone replacement therapy can be helpful, and sometimes it can be helpful, postmenopausal women most certainly do not need to have estrogen levels so high that their endometrial lining is stimulated as much as it was when they were young. And this is really, this is how doctors dose you. This is how doctors dose people on estrogen, typically. They dose it based on what estrogen levels were when we were young. In my opinion, it is best to go by symptomology. And you don't necessarily need to have your estrogen levels checked. Blood tests can be accurate, saliva tests perhaps can be accurate, but symptoms alone are a reliable indicator to a savvy healthcare professional or a savvy patient of excess uh, of deficiencies in estrogen or excess estrogen. Symptoms of estrogen deficiency involve vaginal dryness, mucosal, vaginal mucosal uh, atrophy, shriveling up, thinning of the, vag of the uh, vaginal mucosal lining, persistent hot flashes, even if sometimes people get on progesterone, which usually, by the way, progesterone helps for hot flashes. A lot of women just need progesterone. But if you have persistent hot flashes, that may, be a need, that may uh, indicate a need for some estrogen. Estrogen deficiency can cause urinary tract problem. There's sometimes estrogen is necessary, but you want to be extremely, extremely respectful of it and extremely, extremely careful of it. Weight gain, uh, excess estrogen, too much estrogen can cause weight gain, water retention, breast swelling, lumps, headaches, insomnia, anxiety, hypertension. Even for women who've reached menopause though, progesterone is the way to go. First and foremost, go with progesterone. Some doctors will tell you that estrogen provides protection against heart disease, the jury's still out on that. Most of the research on heart disease and estrogen has been done on combinations of progesterone or progestins, we're gonna talk about that later on, progestins or fake progesterones, drug, drug progesterones. Most of the studies that have been done on heart disease have been done in combination therapy or sometimes they'll do it on Premarin, which is fake estrogen, Premarin, used to be one of the best-selling drugs, now it's not so much. Pregnant, most people know, pregnant mare urine, Premarin. It comes from uh, holding horses in little pens and keeping them uh, pregnant and draining their urine out and then extracting the estrogen. According to a 1998 study of estrogen and heart disease post uh, on postmenopausal women, this was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, after an average follow-up of four to five years, no difference in overall heart disease was observed relative to hormone replacement therapy using Premarin and Provera. Again, these are fake estrogens and fake progesterones. One of the most common reasons for hormone replacement therapy is bone loss which can be dramatic right after menopause. However, according to Dr. John Lee, who is the, he's passed on, but he was the go-to physician when it came to menopausal, menopausal issues and, and hormone replacement issues. He's written quite extensively on the subject. His book is called What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Menopause, and it is the classic book on hormone replacement therapy and estrogen replacement and progesterone replacement. He's a big fan of progesterone. This is a classic book. Any woman who's perimenopausal, or, or if you know anybody who's perimenopausal, or in menopause, what your doctor may not tell you about menopause. It is a classic book. It's easy to read, lots of super information on that. According to Dr. John Lee, quote, most women regain bone balance and maintain good bone density within a few years after menopause, especially if they use progesterone cream, unquote. Dr. John Lee was a big proponent of using progesterone. I learned a lot of stuff back in the 90s from Dr. Lee. Bone resorption, this is the process by which bone is sucked up back into the body. Bone is, we've talked about this before, bone is constantly being broken down and built up. This is very, very important because while estrogen can help with, while estrogen is involved in, in uh, uh, bone resorption, it's not involved in bone building. This is really important when it comes to estrogen replacement therapy. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. The 
Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also check out benfuchsarchives.com for uh, our archives and search engines. If you miss a program or you want to review a program, that's benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. And then also uh, you can search at brightsideben.com. You can also purchase longevity products off the websites brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. And you can purchase our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, anything we're speaking about here today, if you have menopausal issues or reproductive issues, estrogen issues, if you have questions about progesterone or hormone replacement therapy, 844-236-6010 is our number. One of the most common reasons, as I said before, a break for hormone replacement therapy with estrogen involves bone loss. However, estrogen regulates the breakdown of bone, and by using estrogen, you can suppress this catabolic or breakdown of bone, and this is really where estrogen benefits accrue or occur. However, when you suppress the breakdown of bone, what you end up with is weak bone. The way the bone gets strong is by breaking, the body breaks down the old bone and builds new bone, and estrogen has nothing to do with building new bone. That is an issue for progesterone. What is more is that there is a lot of evidence that indicates that bone loss is linked to, surprise, surprise, stress, cortisol. And I'm talking psychological stress, mental stress, as well as physiologic stress. And oh, by the way, that's pretty much the case with all menopausal symptoms, the mood swings, the anxiety, the insomnia the loss of libido, and of course the hot flashes, these are indicative of the stress response. They read like a checklist of the stress response. If you are dealing or you know somebody who's dealing with menopausal symptoms, especially hot flashes, regard this as the manifestation of a jacked up stress response. This is not necessarily an issue for hormone replacement therapy. Calm the body down, especially when it comes to sugar. If you are dealing with hot flashes or you know somebody who's dealing with hot flashes, which are obviously miserable, see if you can associate them with the intake of sugar or with the intake of any kind of, uh, any kind of foods. See if you notice there's a relationship between digestive health issues and your menopausal symptoms. As always, with all health issues, backtrack to the triangle of disease. The adrenal thyroid complex, the blood sugar system, and the digestive system and menopausal symptoms are no different from any other symptomology with all symptoms back track to the triangle of disease number one because it works and number two because you don't need a doctor to do it you don't need drugs to do it the triangle of disease liberates us from the medical model the triangle of disease works the adrenal thyroid complex needs to be addressed by calming the body down the blood sugar system obviously needs to be addressed by reducing your intake of sugar, and that includes bread and pasta and cereal and, and anything that breaks down into sugar, rice and potatoes, etc. At least, if not going zero tolerance, restricting your intake or limiting your intake of those kinds of foods, and using blood sugar stabilizing nutrition, zinc, and vitamin B, uh, the B complex, vitamin B3 in particular, as well as vitamin B1, the beyond tangy tangerine. Essential fatty acids are stupendously valuable for helping the body process sugar and for helping uh, the body deal with menopausal symptoms and for dealing with uh, hormone, hormone symptoms or hormone deficiency symptoms. Can't make steroid hormones without your ultimate EFAs. And of course, it goes without saying, although we say it every day, Make sure you're focusing on digestive health. According to Dr. Lee, a small percentage of women with low estrogen or estrogen deficiency symptoms combined or who have osteoporosis will benefit by using a combination of a very small amount of estrogen with progesterone, but mostly these are women who have little body fat, who have narrow, who are built narrow, petite women, small bones, who aren't making enough postmenopausal estrogen. 
Nonetheless, you have to be extremely respectful and extremely careful. The bottom line here is if estrogen replacement therapy is not necessary, don't do it. If it is absolutely necessary, minimum doses should be used. When estrogen levels are too high, the, risks of, the risk of cancer goes up dramatically, as does the risk of blood clots, as does the risk of other inflammatory responses. Respect the estrogen and be vigilant to the symptoms of excess estrogen. When you get uh, estrogen as hormone replacement therapy, it's probably a good idea to use triple uh, a triest, tri a triest form, triple estrogen. Remember, there's three main estrogens, estradiol, estrone, and estriol. It's probably best to use all three forms. Estrogen exists in the body in all three forms in various ratios, depending on the environment, and depending on biochemical needs, such as stress or allergic responses. And these ratios are always going to be different for everybody. But when you're going to get hormone replacement therapy, it's a good idea to go triest, which is all three. Uh, all three fo main forms of, est of estrogen, estradiol, estrone, and estriol. Uh, sometimes you can go bias, which is just uh, uh, estriol and, and estrone. Either way, it's a good idea to be bioidentical in the sense that you're using all three main, all, all the main estrogens, although technically speaking, there is absolutely nothing like bioidentical. Bioidentical is a marketing term. And bioidentical can never happen because the body is always juggling the amount of estrogens. But triest, which is all three estrogens, or bias, which is made with estra, uh, estradiol and estriol, I think it is. I think it's estradiol and estriol. It's two of the main estrogens rather than three. Those are the ways to go. Now, in addition to these main estrogens, there's also a whole slew of metabolites and breakdown products of estrogen, and these are huge factors when it comes to the relationship of estrogen or the estrogen family of hormones and disease. The technical name for these breakdown products or metabolites is catechol estrogens. Catechols are like your emergency chemicals, and catechol estrogens are super high energy compounds, and those are the ones that are associated with lots of health issues. And that's why it's so critical to work on digestive health, because the digestive system is where these catechol estrogens are eliminated. The elimination of catechol estrogens require bile. It requires a healthy liver. If you're using prescription drugs or any drugs, if you're using alcohol or you're smoking cigarettes, this elimination of these catechol estrogens can be compromised, and disease risk will be increased. If you are smoking cigarettes, it's especially problematic because cigarette smoking puts a major load on the body's detoxification system. And so do drugs, so do prescription drugs. And I've said this before, this is one of the hidden problems that nobody talks about when it comes to prescription drugs. They tax the liver, they tax detoxification systems, they drain the body of nutritional resources that are used for detox. And that's why if you're on estrogen th uh, hormone replacement therapy, or if you have any estrogen problems, or if you've got any kind of inflammatory health issues, if you're a woman with autoimmune diseases, focus on helping your body clear out excess estrogen. Focus on helping your body's detoxification systems. Detoxification system. And that means vitamin C, and that means vitamin E, and that means magnesium, and the B complex, and zinc, and copper. There's a zillion different nutrients that you can use to support detoxification. N-acetylcysteine is one of my all-time favorites. I use it all the time. It's in my blemish repair complex, which I don't talk about that much, but the blemish repair complex is a great liver, a liver detox. It's made with all the nutrients you need for liver detox, including NAC and selenium. And oh, by the way, selenium is awesome for helping the body process as estrogen, as is NAC, as is vitamin E and A, both of which they don't necessarily help the body detox estrogen, but they help the body balance out estrogen. All right, there's so much more to talk about here. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this. On the bright side, Farms is Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open for you if you have questions about anything we're speaking here today. If you're on hormone, re hormone replacement therapy, I'd love to hear from you how you're doing with it, what you're on, if you're on triest or biased. By the way, uh, biased, uh, before we went to break, uh, we're talking about biased and triest. Biased is a, uh, a form of estrogen that's made with two estrogens, estra, uh, the two... Uh, the two, I guess, well, I don't want to say the least toxic estrogens. Biased is made with 
uh, 80% estriol and 20% estradiol. Estradiol can be somewhat toxic. According to Life Extension Magazine, estriol is the safest of the estrogen or the, or the best one to use and the one that has the most medicinal value. Triest is made with all three of the estrogens. If you're on hormone replacement therapy, I'd love to hear from you how you're doing with it. And uh, if you had problems with the estrogen, I'd love to hear from you as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a second. This is from JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association. Dietary factors associated with substantial proportion of deaths from heart disease, stroke, and disease. Well, you guys know this, but a lot of other folks don't because we hear all the time, well, it's just your genetics, or well, it's just your life expectancy, or oh, my dad had heart disease, my mom had heart disease. Well, it turns out that, according to JAMA anyway, nearly half of all deaths due to heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes in the United States were associated with suboptimal consumption of dietary factors. That's from the March 7th edition of JAMA. Yet another reason to get on a good nutritional supplement program. You're not going to be able to get everything you need from foods. Those days are long gone. This is from uh, the University of Colorado at Boulder. Gut microbes and poor artery health. Researchers probe a possible link. Yet another indicator or another uh, reason why you want to get on a good uh, a good probiotic supplement as well as make sure you're eating fermented foods this is so important we don't often think of the digestive tract as being linked to heart disease but it is this is the triangle of disease folks the classic case of the triangle of disease heart disease is secondary to the triangle you cannot just focus on the cardiovascular system without focusing on the digestive system and the blood sugar system and the adrenal thyroid complex. This is the reason behind the failure of the medical model to address this scourge called heart disease, which is by far and away the leading killer of human beings in the United States and around the world. Intestinal bacteria alter gut and brain function. Well, we know about the gut, but it also alters brain function. The uh, intestinal bacteria, microbiome, produce fats, specifically something called short-chain fatty acids, which are extremely important for brain health. Long-term stress linked to obesity. Well, we know that. In fact, that's the number one reason, in my opinion, for the failure of diet to work on weight. A lot of folks go on diets, a lot of folks go on calorie restriction, a lot of folks try to restrict their sugar, and they still can't lose weight, and that's because of the stress hormone cortisol, which is a weight gain or a weight gain hormone. If you are one of those folks who's tried to lose weight, done everything you could do, exercise and, and go on Weight Watchers, and you find that you either can't lose weight or you lose a little bit of weight and then plateau, blame it on cortisol, blame it on stress hormone. Reduce your cortisol through all the parasympathetic activation techniques we talk about on this program, including relaxation, progressive muscle relaxation, eliminating food toxicity, and uh, psychological and emotional and mental strategies as well. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to my buddy Mario in New Jersey. Good morning, Mario. Welcome to the hey, break. Hey, brother. How are you? I'm doing good. What's going on, Mario? Uh, well, I called uh, specifically regarding uh, an announcement I wanted to do on your show. You told me to come back anytime I felt like I needed yeah. to. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, so we well, tell have, the folks uh, who you are, Mario. Tell the folks about your business real quick. So okay, that... well, uh, we started a website. It's called make100healthy.com, and it's regarding the uh, six pillars of life, or what we call the balance of life, uh, physical, mental, uh, social, um, environmental, and I'm losing my place. <laughs> it's mental, mental, physical, uh, spiritual, environmental, social, and financial. So six pillars that, that develop the whole balance of life. And if you live a balanced life, you'll live a life up to 100 years old and more. So uh, it kind of came from, uh, you know, Doc Wallach with the nutrition, but, you know, other uh, pillars involved with that, just not the nutrition and the, uh, the physical sense. Do you have so, a website? you have a website people can look yeah, at? It's make100healthy.com. That's okay. M A K E 100, the number, healthy.com. Okay. And uh, what I wanted to come on today is we want to start a national movement. We're doing, like, you remember that hashtag 22 kill? People were doing push ups online. Uh huh. Yes, I remember well, that. That was to bring uh, attention to uh, 22 uh, soldiers killing each other, you know, killing themselves every day. 
So uh, we wanted to bring attention to obesity, and you were just talking about obesity, which was funny. Um, it's hashtag 33% obese, and uh, that's for 33% of people in the United States are obese. Hmm. And we wanted to bring attention. We're doing a challenge called the Sit Up and Take Notice Challenge. So we're doing 33 sit-ups for 30 days. And, uh, you know, you got to videotape yourself and post it up on our Facebook page as well as, you know, that's going to be posted on our website from there. And uh, we just want people to come on. And uh, we have a progress re uh, progress report that we're giving away on our website. You have to go to make100healthy.com front slash progress. And you get a free progress sheet that you can mark down how many sit-ups you do each day. So not everybody can do 33 push, uh, 33 sit-ups. So um, if you can't do 33 and you can do 10, you mark down 10 and then add two the next day. And then the following day you add two more until you get to obviously 33, and then you could add more And if you want to keep going. So I'm personally doing 33 at one time and adding two a day. So by the time I get down to 30 days, it's going to be 90-something uh, sit-ups. And then the last day I'm going to do 100 sit-ups for this to make 100 healthy. Mario, so your, website's, your website's well, awesome. Your website is awesome. This make 100 oh, thank healthy. You. Thank Who's you. And, uh, you know, we have articles on there, um, obviously some from you, some from Dr. Mercola, from um, the, the Health Ranger. I got articles from all over. So I'm kind of bringing all the articles from everybody's website and hosting them there. Like, you know, they're all, it's kind of like being the drudge report of health. I love it. Know? I love it. That's so, awesome. Who's, who's Ray Dispro? Uh, Ray, Ray Disbro is um, my partner, John's uh, friend, and he's a friend of mine also, he became. And uh, he actually went into a coma for 30 days, and, um, and he came out of it. They wanted to pull the plug on him, and my, my partner, John, didn't let them pull the plug on him. He made the doctors keep him alive, and he ended up coming out of it. He had a stroke, and then he uh, went into a coma. Is he the guy in the video here, this redhead guy in the video? Is that him? Yeah, that's, um, that's my partner, John. And, uh, you know, we, I've been friends with him for 27 years. He actually started me in the DJ industry, and we kind of, like, reconnected into another business together. So That's awesome. I love this. this is, uh, so the six pillars of health, environmental, financial, mental, physical, social, and spiritual. Who came up with that? Um, it was kind of uh, between me and John and uh, another couple of guys. We all kind of like came together on it. And um, we, we have an assessment that you can take on our website. And uh, you can answer questions in each pillar. And it gives you a graph at the end that shows you where you are in your life. Hey, Mario, we got we got we got to take a break, Mario. Hang on, buddy. We'll finish up when we come back, okay? I'm Pharmacist Ben. Make100healthy.com. That's the website. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here. Got uh, my buddy Mario, make100healthy.com. Mario, it's just uh, I'm gonna get to a couple more calls, so let's finish up here. Make100healthy.com. Okay. So what do people need? Just just review real quick. A sit up yeah, video. I, just want, I want everybody to come on. Uh, go to our Facebook page, Make 100 Healthy, and uh, like the page. And uh, you can also go from there. You go to the website, make100healthy.com. Front slash progress. And you get a free progress report um, report that you could uh, mark down your sit-ups each day for 30 days. So we want people to post those videos up on our Facebook page. So and just film yourself with your phone and post it right up on uh, our Facebook page. And, uh, you know, uh, we just want to bring attention to obesity. So it's hashtag 33% obese. What's the ebook or the, the uh, that you get on the website? It says, it says get yeah, the get ebook. A, if you like, you know, when you fill that out, you get a um, you fill out your email, you get a free ebook, and the ebook uh, has uh, all the pillars and just a little explanation about each of them, as well as uh, a tip that you could do to help you in that pillar. So we got like financial tips. There's uh, tips for environmental, for like, you know, water filtration and air filtration and, and um, for physical, you know, food and uh, exercise and nutrition. You know, like there's a little bit of each, um, a little bit of taste of every pillar in there. 
Good deal. Thank you so much, Mario. This is awesome. Make100healthy.com. I'll plug it regularly, too. Thank you, buddy. Take care, man. Hope to talk to you soon. Thanks, Mario. Have a great day. That's my friend Mario in New Jersey. Make100healthy.com. Really neat website with videos and uh, also free ebook if you fill out your, if you give me your address and I guess your email. All right. 844-236-6010. Marshall in California. Good morning. What's up, Marshall? Hey, I got a girl that's for the first time having a early heavy menstrual cycle. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean for the first time? She's a little, well, a little kid? It, she usually has regular periods, but this time she just got uh, really uh, nauseated and tired huh. and had a heavy cycle early how, for the first time. How old time. is she? How old? 41. She's 5'7", oh, okay. 140. Looks good. Muffin top. Uh, muffin top. I'm not sure what that. Oh, like a little, oh, that means little belly. A little fat around the waist. A little fat around the. Yeah, a little belly. Uh, okay, here's the deal. That sounds like a, a hormonal issue. A couple things that you want to do. First of all, you want to start stabilizing or balancing out the estrogen, or actually getting okay, rid of some. That's the part that I didn't get. Get a couple things with estrogen, okay? First of all, you want to start balancing out and also supporting the elimination and the detoxification of estrogen. Get her on some fiber, uh, flaxseed fiber. Have you heard of my flax? Have you heard me talk about flaxseed pudding? With a almond, coconut, uh, with a chocolate almond milk, unsweetened chocolate almond milk. You grind up flax seeds, maybe two, two or three tablespoons. Put them in some chocolate, unsweetened chocolate almond website? milk. Ah, uh, no, I just kind of made it up. Unsweetened, unsweetened chocolate almond milk. Two or three tablespoons of flaxseed ground up. You always got to grind up your flax seeds. You can also throw in a little chia seed in there too. Uh, you don't have to grind up the chia seeds because they swell up when they contact the liquid. Uh, cut it with water and maybe throw a little stevia in there if you want it to be a little bit sweeter. And uh, do that once or twice a day. It'll keep her regular. It'll help support the elimination of excess estrogen. Make sure she's using good bacteria, probiotics, and fermented food, both supplemental probiotics like the Nightly Essence, which is my favorite probiotic, and then also uh, fermented foods and fermented vegetables in particular. Fermented foods in general, like kefir and, and miso, are good, but fermented vegetables are especially good, especially broccoli, uh, not fermented broccoli, but broccoli and cauliflower and cruciferous vegetables in general, which contain something that we haven't talked about but we will be talking about called glucurate. And uh, you can also get supplemental glucurate, G-L-U-C-A-R-A-T-E, calcium delta, or calcium D, not delta, calcium D glucurate is a great supplement for helping the body clear out excess estrogen. You can get glucurate and glucurate-like substances in broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage. Uh, of course, fermented cabbage will get you both glucurate and the ferment, uh, fermented ba the bacteria from the fermented cabbage and also good stomach acid. That's one of the neat things about sauerkraut is if not only do you get probiotics, but you also get the glucurate, you also get the fiber, and you get something called vitamin U, which is very helpful for the digestive system. Vitamin A and vitamin E have wonderful estrogen balancing effects. Make sure she's getting on 20,000 IU of vitamin A, 400 international unit of vitamin E. I'd also be using the ultimate selenium, maybe 400 micrograms a day. There's a very important uh, estrogen protection effect that selenium imparts. Iodine can be helpful. Get her on iodine. Overall, uh, eating seaweed is also great. Seaweed's a good source of iodine, plus it's great for the digestive system. Plus, it'll also help balance out excess estrogen. And then uh, there's a couple other things. Magnesium is also very important for helping balance out estrogen. Also, anything she could do for the liver and anything she could do to eliminate problem foods. Last but most certainly not least, for any menstrual problems, for any menopausal issues, for any female health issues, make sure she's using her essential fatty acids, the ultimate EFAs, maybe nine to 12 a day. Lots of stuff you could do there. Uh, if, uh, one last thing that you might want to consider is progesterone cream, which as, I say, as I've been saying is non-toxic, unlike estrogen, and it can help balance out excess estrogen. Remember, we get estrogen from a lot of places, not just biological estrogen, but xenoestrogen from milk and from uh, other dairy kinds of foods, from fish and from, from uh, poultry and from uh, any kind of meat. Uh, animals are given estrogen to fatten them up. Uh, there's estrogen in the water supply, and of course, if you're on uh, birth control pills, that's another source of estrogen. All right, Marshall, okay, I hope I hope she has her uh, tubes tied. Does that make a difference? Yeah, that'll probably, that's not, that's going to throw off her hormones a little bit, but, you know, there's not much you could do about that. Just okay, have her, do you have, have a her, quick fix for nausea? 
uh, yeah, for her. Uh, on a menstrual cycle? No, there's no real quick fix for nausea, but there, there's some, some things you might want to try. Ginger can be helpful for some folks. Uh, pyridoxine or vitamin, uh, vitamin B6 can be helpful for some folks. There's a medicine that you get at the drugstore called Emetrol, E-M-E-T-R-O-L, Emetrol. That can be helpful for some folks as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Nausea means the body's trying to get rid of something, and it's very difficult to address nausea without going into medicine, uh, real hardcore drugs. But sometimes folks get some relief from ginger and also from vitamin B6. I want to get a couple more calls in here, uh, Marshall. I'm going to let you go. All right, buddy? Thank you. Thank you. Good to talk to you, Marshall. That's my friend Marshall from California. Let's go to Frank in Connecticut. Good morning, Frank. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, how you doing, uh, Ben? Um, uh, I've been listening for a long time, to, um, and uh, I, I take actually the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and try to stay away from the gluten diet. I actually do sunflower nice. sprouts and a lot of other stuff. Um, but the question is today, um, I want to get my mom on the longevity program. Okay. And um, she basically has chronic headaches, um, and uh, she went to the doctor, and they said something about her thyroid possibly starting to go well, high thyroid. Hyper or hypo? Low or, or high? Uh, what did you say, Mom? Usually it's poorly functioning thyroid. It's hypothyroidism. That's very, very common. But that's not the – I mean, that may be involved. It usually is involved in, in health challenges. As you know from our triangle of disease, the thyroid is the jumping off point to all chronic degenerative diseases. So if you have some kind of health issue, pretty much you rest assured – a chronic progressive health issue, pretty much you can rest assured you got a thyroid problem. But that's not really where the problem – loss, too. A lot of weight loss. She's dealing with weight loss? Yeah, like almost. Okay. Almost then she like, might be. She lost like about 100 pounds almost. Been the does last, she feel. Uh, d- does she get hot flashes or jittery or, or problems sleeping, anxiety, anything like that? Kind of, yeah. Okay, yeah. I would be. The, the two major causes, and plus the headaches, the two major causes of all those problems and the headaches are the hormone estrogen as well as the hormone cortisol, um, and also blood sugar can be involved as well. She may have a digestive health issue. Always, always, always back track to the digestive system. If she has any kind of loose, she probably has diarrhea or loose stools, that kind of thing. See if you could connect it up to problem foods. Usually when you have, uh, when you have diarrhea or loose stools, the body is trying to eliminate something that it cannot absorb or it does not want to absorb. And obviously this means some kind of food or sometimes it's a supplement or maybe a medication. So see if she can link up her digestive problems to something she's ingesting and then stop doing it. Stop ingesting it. Now she may also want to see if she can relate her headaches to either specific foods she's eating or specific parts of her cycle. How old is your mom, by the way? Is she mom, still having your... Okay, so she's postmenopausal. So she's postmenopausal. Um, Don't... I had a hysterectomy. Oh, she had a hysterectomy. Okay, well, if you had a hysterectomy, that means you had problems with your estrogen. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done a hysterectomy. So you may have some estrogenic issues. Get on progesterone cream. Use 400 international units a day of vitamin E, 20,000 international units a day of vitamin A. Get her on the osteomag. Make sure she's getting enough magnesium, 1,000 milligrams or maybe 1,500 milligrams a day of magnesium. If she has malabsorption issues, she may the magnesium may cause some diarrhea. So make sure she uses the magnesium with food. Make sure she's on the ultimate enzymes with all of her meals. I would go get some extra bile salts as well and maybe some extra lecithin. There's, there's tons more I could tell you. Have her review the program or even better, send me an email ben at ksco.com and put your phone number in there and i'll get back to you and we'll uh, work on this together oh yeah that's all the uh, thanks frank appreciate it that's all the time we have for today i'm pharmacist ben have a wonderful spectacular beautiful day we'll talk to y'all later folks bye for now